and Yong Haseyo. Now that is a lovely greeting, but an ironic one to start a combat episode on. But still, it is a beautiful greeting. Welcome to episode 48 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. This episode is a continuation on combat, but in this episode we are going to be training your defences. Now, before you start uh, with saying, um, well I know what you're saying, Gamester, you had us playing with dolls in the last episode. Are you going to man up in this episode? It is supposed to be about combat. Well, my answer to that is, well, sort of. So, let's uh, get started, shall we? Now, before I dive into honing our defences, I'm going to show you something else, which is important um, to us, but if you're playing Worm Online, this is a master stroke. Trust me. This is just this is how me Rainstorm and me have got still about eight months left on our deed. Okay, time wise. It is and I've got Rainstorm completely to thank for that because she's so fantastic with selling to the token. Now if you're playing Worm Online and you want to keep your deed uh, topped up with um with your uh, money, okay, so you want to keep it topped up. The best way to do it, whenever you kill a monster of any kind, any critter, any creature, sell always sell the corpse to the token. Why? Because you'll notice under the quality level, the amount of money you get selling to the token is dependent on the quality level. So for 10 quality level, I believe you'll get something like 1 to 5 iron. You won't get much. For a 20 quality item, you'll get more. For 30 and 40 and 50, it increments. Every 10 quality levels, you will get more money. So 100 quality level is the highest you can get. And guess what? By selling this corpse, let's show you. So you dub activate the corpse, right click on the token and left click sell. Notice down here, it goes through, I got the top amount which is 11 iron. Um, now bear in mind there's 100 irons to 1 copper and 100 coppers to 1 silver. Now that may not seem like much but as you go through a day on an average hunting trip you could come back with, I don't know, 20, 30 corpses. You sell all of them to the token. And you do that again tomorrow or next week. And before you know it, your token's filling up with money. Now, there is a restriction on how much you can sell to a token. But I believe it's once an hour. So with the new hour comes you being able to sell to the token again. So there we are. I just wanted to show you that because that is something fantastic for keeping your tokens topped up um, because you'll have the money to put into them right now did you answer that question yet about is there any special modifications to our combat pens so if you've answered that which I hope you have you'll realize yes there is now over here I've built a few combat pens okay you're gonna why would you bother with a combat pen well in worm online where things are very slow the skills you most definitely would bother because it while you're new your character is low and your skills are low remember it's your fighting skill which is the all-important skill so that one there while that's low you want to have every advantage you can get now with the combat pens you would have answered correctly if you'd have said two things. One, you build your pen on a slope going down. That way, when you put the different creatures in the pen that you want to train with, they will automatically be at a disadvantage. Yes, you've guessed it, because they will be on lower ground to you. Unless, of course, like this little dog here, decided to basically try and squeeze through the gate, in which case I can just lead him back to that end. But 
we're not going to do him yet anyway. We're going to have some fun with the rooster, which is what I promised you a while back, if you remember. You also heard, remember, hearing Rainstorm playing with a rooster. Well, I'm going to play with Mr. Rooster now. But what I'm going to do is, I did say to you, didn't I, last episode, Gamester's going down. Well, I ran out of time, so I couldn't show you that. So, you will now see death in this episode. Because I thought I was going to show you it when I did the uh, crude tools. I felt sure I was going to drown, but I didn't. Okay, so death is long overdue for me in front of you. So I'm going to show you that. What we're going to do is we're going to go and find uh, Mr. Rooster. First of all, let's check my notes. I don't want to jump ahead of myself here. Okay, so hopefully you got the question right about the pen the second one of course was notice it's only two tiles deep the reason for that is the whole point of using a combat pen is that you can put the creature near to the gate the gate is your exit for if things go south for if things start to go wrong if you start to lose the battle and you want to actually win it or you're just training so you don't actually want to die so you can just step out the gate so thereby having two tiles you haven't got to go far to get out of the pen if it's three tiles deep and the crit critters right at the end on the third tile and let's say that you're training with a crocodile and it bites you in your leg that's going to slow down your your speed to get out of that pen and three tiles deep could mean your death because the crocodile is going to be getting you from the rear that's not good in it by any standards for any creature to be hitting you from behind so the closer you are to the gate the better it is for you okay so let's see what do I want to talk about next see there's so many things I mean I just know that I'm going to skip over something very important that I wanted to tell you but I'll just try my best so okay here's another question for you then okay just to keep you engaged we have a mature ball in that pen a venerable dog in that pen and an aged rooster in that pen which of these three creatures will be the one to kill me okay there's the question right so we'll leave that question there and you can have your guess and I shall now continue on okay the next thing for us to do before we even think about going and training is we make sure we do not have a weapon in our hand we do not this exercise I want to make very clear is to not kill any of these creatures these creatures we want to keep alive because we want to train our uh, defenses okay so we can train our fighting because if we have no weapon we will be doing weaponless fighting which I'm gonna to get to okay you get weaponless fighting even if you have weapons in your hand but you'll see we're gonna look at a new tab in a moment which we've not seen before that I've not showed you in this uh, series yet so we're gonna to get to that and I'll be able to show you that and the distance that I spoke about in the last episode so we need to make sure we have no weapon because we don't want to kill these creatures we're just training our skills and we'll have a look at what skills are going up as we train okay right so now there is another trick that I want to show you because this um, with worm okay the fighting to the to someone who doesn't realize the depth of this game when it comes to fighting you can quite easily fight a creature and think that it is quite uh, there's nothing to it you're not really doing anything well one of the aims of me doing these episodes on combat is to just educate you a little with that to show you that it's a lot deeper than you actually realize sure you can keep it to auto combat and everything's done for you but if you want to perfect your combat you can you can turn off the auto fight and then perform it manually anyway let's jump into it shall we enough waffling before you switch off this video I better actually show you something now here's another question why have I parked my cart right over there right away from the pen 
why am I not fighting on the cart and why have I left it right over there okay very good reason for that I'll answer it now you've had time to think about that pause it if you wish I'm gonna start fighting this rooster when I'm fighting him I just want to get the benefits of defense as in you're gonna see with my shields my shields gonna go up I do not want to be hurting him the best way for me to fight this rooster and train with my defenses is to simply not have him targeted now you can right click and just do no target but what I prefer to do which stops him being initiated as the target again by mistake is I prefer to target another creature so you're gonna see that after I've started fighting Mr. Rooster I'm then gonna target a ball I won't be able to hurt the ball because he'd be too far away from me it will just simply stop the target changing back to the rooster now you may not appreciate what I've just told you there but trust me it is so useful down the road to know something like that but there we go let's get started right okay so we have we wouldn't do this without our armor and weapons especially not without a shield because that's specifically what I want to show you training we're gonna train our medium metal shield where is it there it is okay so that's the one we're hoping to train so what we'll do we will attack the target okay we now have this combat tab you try to hit an aged rooster Well, I never actually realized that before because unless you get one hit in it doesn't look like we're gonna do anything so what I'll have to do is quickly oh I do hope I kept it on the car yeah I did fantastic okay what I'll do is I will use the shaft I will use the shaft to initialize combat so let's equip that Ah, right, okay, it's not the shaft at all. I realise what it is, why it's not attacking. It wasn't because I had the shaft. And yes, I don't care that I've just fallen flat on my face. We're used to that. And anyway, I'm well past caring. So, we need to put the shield back because that just de-equipped it by equipping a two-handed weapon. We now need to... The reason I can't attack Mr. Rooster is because he is either one of two reasons either because I'm caring for him let's go to the event window see I'm caring for him so it's either that reason or because he's tamed at the moment I'm gonna go with the one that he's because I'm caring for him so to stop caring for a creature okay bring up this window right click on your body go to manage animals and where it says aged rooster see I've got an option uncare for I can also untame but I'm gonna go for uncare for because I think that is the one okay now let's try an attack is it still doing the same no, yeah okay so it has to be the other one so manage animals and untame yeah so it was because I tamed him. Valuable lesson there. Right, so we haven't got a weapon. Now what I will do is I will attack the ball. It thereby brings that up in the target window. But notice he is still attacking me. Now I will stay on the higher ground because I don't want him to, the rooster, to kill me off too quickly. I don't mind taking damage. But we're training the shield skill so we want him to hit us as much as he can okay now if I switch back to the rooster well no I won't switch back yet let's just see so you're seeing here the skills are getting trained and it looks like because I am not attacking none of these skills will go up the weaponless skill I'm believing is that I need to have a weapon in order for it to attack so if we look down here you'll see where he's hitting me you'll see my parrying he's just took a peck out of me 
And did you know, here's a, something for you, that the rooster has a special move against all male NPCs. He can peck you in your crown jewels. I kid you not. Well, in fact, yes, I am just messing with you. It's just something to say while he's attacking me. See here, now, if I click on the body, he's given me a very light bite to my chest. Okay. So, as far as my health goes, though, you can see it's very slow, which is perfect for me training my shield skill. Now, the shield... I'm going to get to in a second of the benefits. We know about Shield Bash, so I'm going to explain those some of the skills. There are all different types of skills. I'm going to try and separate them all out for you, so so you're, it's easier for you to digest. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to Wormpedia and read about the fighting sub skills. These skills here. So. Let's switch to Wormpedia. I'm going to leave Mr. Rooster just fighting me because he's not really doing that much harm. It's because I've got my armor on and because my shield. If I took these off, you will see. In fact, let's take them off. Let's take my armor off and just leave my shield for starters. Or I switch to Wormpedia. Now watch and see how much, if any, the damage goes up that he suddenly is going to be hitting me for. Because it might be you want to try training without getting your armour all damaged. Because he will be damaging it. Okay, before here, you see it was all white. He was not getting any hits in. Okay? But my shield was doing a lot and is still doing a lot. But notice now that I've taken my armour off he is starting to hit me. He's hit me in the hand, he's hit me in the stomach again. So I'm now getting more, more hits in. He's getting many more hits in. If I unequip my shield, I now will not be parrying anymore. Now you can see why the rooster is a very good creature to train with. As long as you don't have a weapon, he is just going to keep going and going. But uh, I'm going to equip all of this because I do want to train my um, my shield. So let's get it back. You now know that your rooster is invaluable. So start breeding the roosters. And also they can take a few hits as well. So you can train your weapon fighting with uh, the rooster. But you will kill him quite quickly once your skills start to increase. Anyway, let's switch to Wormpedia and read the uh, fighting sub-skills to you. Okay, so the fighting sub-skills are the weaponless fighting. This is reading from Wormpedia. Weaponless fighting. Fighting without weapons equipped. Depends on weight of items being carried and type of armour. Skill is gained when a kick or hit message is received. So, fighting without weapons equipped. So, this is exactly what we are doing. Notice, though, that the only skill increase we are getting is the shields. So, weapon, weaponless fighting is basically just what it says okay moving on aggressive fighting reduced defense but increased of offense damage is enhanced two-handed weapons swing faster well we've already been over that with uh, the two-handed weapons now aggressive fighting what I'm gonna do for these three sub skills of uh, aggressive fighting defensive and normal which are the three that you can see up here let me explain as I read through Wormpedia the uses, why you would use them. First of all then, aggressive fighting. What is the scenario that you would use aggressive fighting in? Right, let's say you're out with friends hunting. So there is more than just you that is fighting creatures. One of you is going to be the tank. Uh, what I mean by that is, they are going to be the main person that attacks the creature 
that the creature attacks. They will achieve that by using the taunting skill. Now you will notice a lot of the skills you won't see yet and you won't see them on your character. The skills unlock, the skills and special moves that you get unlock the higher your weapon sub-skills get. So if I fight with a longsword, the special moves and the fighting skills attached to swords will only start to appear once my skill in that particular weapon starts to increase. Now, if I just say that I got my large axe to 30, you will then notice either a special move or a special skill that you can then use. So as you increase your mauls, axes, long swords, clubs, or any of the weapons, you will gain then access. They will unlock, the higher the skill gets, will start to unlock special moves and skills that you can use. So you're, you've gone in a group of people, and the main person who's been established, who's going to be the tank, will start taunting the creature. That creature will then get aggroed by them, aggravated by that person who's taunting. They will then switch to attacking them. At that point, the rest of you will switch to aggressive fighting. Your defences will be lowered, but that will not matter because that creature, that hostile creature you're fighting, has the full attention, is fully focused on fighting the tank, the person who is taunting. So thereby, you can get sucker punches in, in aggressive mode, swinging your weapons faster because you're in aggressive mode to exploit the fact that that creature is not targeting you. Now if that creature suddenly started attacking you, you would then switch to defensive stance. Now let's switch back to Wormpedia and read defensive fighting. Defensive fighting, reduced offense but increased defense. Moving combat um, rating penalties are reduced parry and dodge rate is increased so when would you use defensive fighting well let's say you made the mistake of making your pen your combat pen three tiles deep and the crocodile took a bit out of bite out of one of your legs you can you're then walking slowly and don't know if you're going to make it out the pen in time because he's killing you well switch to defensive fighting then that will buy you a bit more time to get out the pen because your defense ratings and your movement will not penalize you, um, penalize your combat rating. It will boost your defenses. So there we are. That's the ideal scenario for when using defensive. Also, if you're that tank that has the focus of the hostile creature, that is the combat stance you will be using. Because you are getting all the attacks from the creature, the critter, you want to be able to last as long as you can in combat for all of your friends to be able to take it down quickly. So you switch to defensive stance. So there we are. That's aggressive. That's defensive. Let's now switch back to the fighting sub skills and continue. Next is normal fighting. Defenses and offenses are weapons defaults, scaled with skills and body stats. Okay, normal fighting is what I will always choose to use. I mean, I'm not fighting this rooster, he's fighting me, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I can leave it on defensive. And uh, you see my my me me medium shield still going up even though I've switched to defensive it means I can last even longer so there we go normal fighting though when I'm out fighting when I'm fighting creatures and training my fighting skills I will always use normal fighting basically if you're playing solitary solo on your own you will always use normal fighting that way it will give you the benefits that I mentioned in the last episode. Okay, moving on. Fighting sub-skills worm from Wormpedia. Taunting. Attempting to taunt your opponent to attack you instead of your allies. Yep, we've already been over why you'd use taunting. Shield bashing. Knocking over your opponent with your shield. 
Higher skill in shield bash results in a longer time the opponent is disabled on ground. A combination of shield skill and shield bash skill calculates hit chance. Shield bashing does some damage to the opponent. This results in a stun. Oh, and you've got to love the stuns. Now, for me, one of my favourite things in combat in any game is if they give you a stun ability. Because, let's face it, nothing better than stunning the monster and then being able to switch to aggressive and fight it. If it's a decent amount of time. For Worm, the stun, well, you've guessed it, because your skills are low, your stun will be low. So build up your skills and get that stun something to something reasonable. Beware that this might take the attention of the enemy to the person doing the shield bashing. So if you're in a group of people in the scenario I mentioned a moment ago, be careful with your shield bashing because you might take aggro. So that would be a good thing for the tank to keep doing as well, shield bashing. That will help keep the aggro. Right, okay, let's now switch to my notes and see what else I was going to do. Say. Um, Right, okay, so that is um, the fighting sub skills. Okay, so along with all of what I've just said there, you now appreciate why you want to get your chosen weapon skill as high as you can. So not just your fighting skill do you want to get up, you also want to get your weapon of choice skill up as well, whatever that may be. You want to get it as high as you can, you'll start unlocking special moves. Anyway, so let's now switch back to um, Wormpedia and read the weapon skills. Okay, now when you're fighting, okay, if I had a weapon equipped, I would see different messages in the combat about what damage I'm doing to the creature that I'm fighting. With the rooster, oh my goodness, you see this, with the uh, defensive uh, stance, he uh, he's just not hitting me. And, and look, I'm healing quicker than he's damaging me. My shields are now at 20. You see the difference. When you're getting to 20 in your skills, it's you make your first leap. I want you to observe that with your weapons. You make your first leap when you get them to 20. It's amazing in Worm. It really does reward you. Right, so anyway, weapon skills. When you're fighting with your weapons, you'll see different damage messages. The messages are as follows. You will see... Damage dealt... So down, I'm talking about down here, the messages. Damage dealt, swing timer, stance availability. So it tells you when you can use your stance again uh, or chance of it. Chance to parry, which you've been noticing with the shield and special moves available. So as you unlock special moves, you'll notice it informs you down here that you can then use them. Swing timer is decreased by 1% for every 10 skill levels Weapon quality level also affects everything listed except swing timer and chance to parry. An easy way to gain weapon skill with axes and swords is to cut down trees and get uh, your wood cutting until 20 skill. So basically I've told you all about that already. Okay, but what Wormpedia does say about getting your skill to 20... This renders even the lowest skill fighter a fairly potent adversary to most common creatures in the Worm universe and offers some good body and woodcutting skill gain to boot. So it's saying if you do get your skill, your, your, your swords and your axes in woodcutting to 20, you get your, your axe and sword skills to 20, it's then telling you that you then become a potent adversary. To the weaker creatures, that is. Like the creatures I've got lined up in these pens. You aren't going to be ready for a troll yet, trust me. So there we are. That is the weapon skills. Right, let's now switch to a different creature. Because I think Mr Rooster's got bored with me. Okay, now something important in 
combat is to keep your stamina up. Ugh. Right, okay, something important in combat is to keep your stamina up. How do you regain your stamina? You have to stop fighting. How do you stop fighting? Usually, if you go to no target, you see, now my stamina. Your stamina impacts your skill gain. So, your skill gain, once you run out of stamina, will slow down, especially with your fighting skill. So over here, the fighting skill, you won't be getting an optimum amount of fighting skill if you have no stamina. All, always remember, that's why I'm training as well in a little pen. Step out the gate, get your stamina back to full, then carry on the fun or the fighting. So okay, let's look quickly then at Mr. Dog. How quickly he can damage me. And I'm sorry for going over the timer, but I just want to quickly demonstrate. So we've seen Rooster does nothing hardly when I'm in defensive mode. Let's see. Oh, you can see the dog just took a bite out of me straight away. Again, it's very light. And down here, you can see, let's show you the type of attacks he's doing to me. With the Rooster, it was clawing me most of the time. Oh, I hit the dog. I slapped the dog. That was a bit of weaponless fighting. Did you see that it went up? Did you notice my defensive fighting is training up now as well? I didn't notice that before, but yeah, here you go, you see. So I'm now on the dog training my weaponless fighting, my defensive fighting, and my shield, sub-skill shield, and my sh I'm training four skills. How cool is that? Yes, I'm now taking slightly more damage, but how cool is that? Well, I mean, I can get these all on 20. Then I'm ready to step out into the wilderness and take on maybe some wildcats or maybe a bear even. But I won't do it unless I've got my car. So there we go, though. I don't want, I want to keep the, these creatures healthy. You see, though, he's doing more damage. Let's now try the ball, because I have gone through the timer. Anyway, I mean, you can stop the video if, you've, uh, if you can't watch anymore. This is for those of you that want to just see a bit further. Okay, let's now attack the ball. Yep, I've managed to annoy all these creatures. But I can, as long as you get out the pen for a little while, they are going to calm down and be friendly again. See, there was the dogs. The dog was clawing me and I believe bites. What about the ball? What does the ball do to me? Let's have a quick look. Yep, as you guessed, the ball kicks me. And you will see that my damage is now going up even more. Notice that's why I tiered the creatures this way. Starting with the rooster, he done the weakest, then the dog. Now the ball though is a bit unfair because he's any mature. Really I would have liked to have an old or aged ball. But I'm afraid they're all deceased because I needed to start accumulating meat and leather and hides for more episodes. So I forgot that I'd need a ball for the fighting episode and run out of aged and old because I'd killed them all. Oh well, never mind. Such is life. I've got the ball. Now, let's unequip these items and see how long it is before I die. Because I did promise you that the gamester was going to meet his sorry end, which you've probably all been hoping for for a long time now. So here we go. Who am I to disappoint? Let's take off all our armour and my shield. And let's see how long it takes for him to kill me. And then I will end the episode there. But I do want to show you dying at least once. Just to show you what options you can get. Not sure if the ball will kill me quicker or the dog. Oh, let's put it to aggressive. Oh no, I don't want to hurt him though. Oh yeah, but he's doing a lot more damage to See the difference straight away between defensive and aggressive. He, as long as I'm not hurting him. No, I'm only doing slaps. See, very lightly. I mentioned a moment ago, it tells you down here the type of damage you do. When I read the Wormpedia. 
As long as he stays healthy, I'm happy. Of course, with me, it's a different story. You can see I'm starting to get different types of wounds. I'm not particularly going to show you them, because I'm going to leave that for the healing episode, which is going to be a very fun episode indeed. But here we go, we are getting there. Now, you'll notice, as my health drops, you will see a red glow. The red glow denotes how close I am to death. Oh, he's hurt. So, I hope I don't kill him. I don't want to kill him. Let's have a look. Yeah, very light, so he's okay. Come on, Mr. Ball. Kill me before I do serious damage to you. Hurt, I do, do not believe. See, it's starting to go red. That's as I'm starting to die. I could do so much damage though just with my weapon the sight in my hands here we go it's getting more red soon I will be deceased Notice all the damage I have around me. When I die, all of these wounds will go. So, because we haven't got to the healing episode yet, I don't want to be able to get... I don't want to heal myself, basically. Well, I haven't got any healing components anyway. So, this is one way to, to basically make everything better. By simply dying. This is only an option if you put down your tent or you have a deed. And I'm going to show you why. There you go. Right, now, so I've died. Here is your choices. If you do not have a tent placed down, it will not be in the list. If you have placed your tent down, your tent will be in this list. If you have a deed, your deed will be in this list. So, you'll notice here... I'm going to choose the token of my deed. I know exactly where that will place me, that's why I'm going to choose it. You can choose, I could, because I'm a member of um, Rainstorm's uh, deed, I also get that as an option. So I'm going to anyway choose the token. Here we go, click send. It now puts me straight back at my token, which is there. How cool is that? So there we are. I hope you've got gained a few useful things from this episode. And I hope you enjoyed watching me die. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you. And keep every single last one of you safe. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye.